So this right here is some juicy, juicy grass of various kinds. You know, right here we have some coontail in my hand, we have a lily pad, and behind me we have a, a myriad of different types of grass species. And so I wanted to make a video right now covering my top three lures for fishing around grass, moss, or whatever you guys call it on your home bodies of water, whether it's a pond, a lake, or a river. So let's sit down and let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody? My name is Tyler Anderson and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. I apologize in advance for the flies, they're all over the screen, but uh, my goal on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers and I'm up here in the great state of Minnesota, which is home to not only 10,000 lakes, but probably 10,000 different species of aquatic vegetation. Uh, and I get the question all the time of how do I fish in my pond or my lake that has different types of vegetation. So I'm gonna make this video super simple. Uh, I will at some point break down different types of vegetation and my favorite lures and techniques for how to catch fish in those but today I'm lumping them all into one anything that is green or has a tint of green in it I'm gonna be calling vegetation in today's video whether it's on top of the water like a lily pad is or whether it's underneath the water like coontail milfoil hydrilla uh, whatever there's a whole list I'll put them over here whole list of grasses that are underneath the water they all hold bass at basically all times of the year especially if you live in the south like I do and so I'm going to explain my top three lures and why I choose those for fishing in and around grass uh, but one thing that I have to say right away is that a lot of ponds so a lot of you guys that fish ponds out there uh, you do not actually have grass you have what I call snot grass which is a very annoying kind of slimy sort of grass that coats your lures and that's not the grass that I'm talking about today I'm actually talking about the, the the weeds I guess up here in Minnesota they call it uh, that usually infest any sort of lake or pond and actually have some sort of um, benefit to the body of water so these things uh, filter the water make it clearer and of course add habitat for the entire ecosystem and of course have some good bass in them as well if you have some some snot grass in your pond I'll talk about that kind of specific scenario for you guys but you're definitely gonna have a harder time fishing some of the lures that I talk about if you have that snot grass and not the real aquatic vegetation so with that out of the way, let's talk about lure number one, and that is going to be the Senko. So the Senko is, uh, is just a fish catcher. Y'all know all about this thing. I'm not going to talk about it for a whole lot, and I'm actually going to lump this together with the soft plastic jerkbait, also known as the Fluke. I feel like in grass fishing scenarios, these kind of serve the same purpose. Now, of course, if you know your fish are feeding heavily on bluegill or bait fish, you're going to want to throw soft plastic jerkbait, such as the Strike King Caffeine Shad, uh, just because it, it's a better representation of what the fish are eating. But if you're not sure what they're eating and you just want to catch some fish, I would highly recommend the Strike King Ocho, usually in the five inch for uh, any sort of pond or, uh, or lake out there. And the reason why I choose this one as my number one lure for grass is because, in, especially in a weightless or barely weighted, you know, a 16th ounce weight uh, scenario, is because it doesn't actually get you stuck in the grass. My number one tip for grass fishing is you have to fish in the grass. So many times in my life I've met people that say, oh, I, I kind of stay away from the grass because my lure gets stuck in it and I can't tell the difference between a bass bite and my lure getting stuck in the grass. And you just have to get over that. You have to get over the fact that it's uncomfortable sometimes to peel grass off your lures, to rip them out of the grass, but that is where the bass live. And so I love these two because they easily slide in and out of the grass. And I'm, I guess you could lump together any sort of soft plastic, especially a weightless version of this. So you know, to kind of touch on the, the snot grass or the weird moss some of y'all have in your ponds, you have to throw weightless soft plastics because that stuff oftentimes covers the bottom of your pond or your lake. And any sort of weight on your soft plastic, on your jig, on your crankbait, you're going to dig up all that stuff and get it all over your lures. So weightless is definitely the way to go when it comes to soft plastics in that scenario. When you're fishing around some actual good grass like this stuff is here, you can get away with a little bit of a weight, especially if you are fishing deeper than five, six feet. You're actually going to need a weight on your soft plastics. So the combo that I throw this on, of course, you guys have seen me talk about it before, anywhere from a seven foot medium heavy to a seven two medium to a seven three medium heavy. I kind of go seven foot to seven three, any medium, medium heavy, depending of course on the line size, the lighter the line size, you want to go the lighter of the rod. So if you're throwing 10 pound test line, you want to make sure you're throwing a medium action rod and you're throwing heavier line, 
15, 17, 20 pound, you wanna be throwing a medium heavy or a heavy action rod to match the line size. Uh, but that is a just super simple way to catch more fish in the grass, and that is lure number one. So moving on to lure number two, my most exciting one, a frog. When it comes to topwater fishing around grass, you really don't have another choice. And I've talked about this in many other videos before, but a frog is really the only topwater you can throw uh, that does not get caught up in the grass. Now today we're fishing, you'll see a few catches here at the end of the video here in Minnesota. I was able to fish a topwater walking bait over the grass because the grass didn't actually reach the surface of the water. So you definitely can throw other topwaters, but especially when you're fishing around stuff like this, and when you have grass like this, that is completely matted up to the top, and you want to throw top water, you really had no choice but to throw a frog. So this is definitely my number two choice when it comes to fishing uh, around grass, around, around weeds, around moss, whatever you want to call it. I call it grass, you can call it something else. But a frog is great because it allows those fish uh, to come up and be aggressive on something that oftentimes a lot of people don't throw. I think a lot of people are kind of too scared to throw their frogs super far and over all sorts of, all sorts of grass, uh, but you have to have the right equipment to do that. And so the right rod and reel combo you need for a frog of course, it's going to be a heavy rod and reel combo. The, the action of your rod has to be stiff. And so I throw it on the Luz Custom Speed Stick 7.6 heavy rod with 65 pound braid. This is Seaguar uh, Smackdown braid in the, in the stealth gray. And then I have a Luz Hyper Mag and a high speed gear ratio reel with the all Strike King Pop and Perch. So this is kind of my, my favorite uh, frog fishing combo, whether I'm in a lake or whether I'm in a pond. And just get out there and throw it. That's the, the best thing I can say. I will have a frog fishing instructional coming for you guys here specifically in the next few weeks but uh it's definitely my number two lure when it comes to uh, fishing a frog and y'all will see um a fishing grass and y'all will see also some more topwater fish catches here at the end of, uh, of this video and so now that we've talked about my number two lure my number three lure is going to be something that i haven't made a whole lot of videos of but it's starting to uh find its place in my arsenal to be very very versatile around all different types of grasses and water clarities and that is the swim jig The swim jig for so long scared me, and I'm not exactly sure why. I was always confused how guys were catching fish on it, and over time I realized it is almost a do-nothing lure. Much like the Texas rig uh, Senko or the Fluke, you cast them out there, you kind of let them sit. The swim jig, you cast it out there and you reel it in. It is pretty dang simple. Now, of course, we'll talk about honorable mentions when it comes to lures that are like this, but I think for most of y'all out there, you know, I've talked about, you know, the 90% rule at 10% of the time, you're going to find something that works better than what I talk about. But I think for most of y'all's lakes and ponds, putting a rage uh, menace on the back of a swim jig is definitely going to be your best option for catching the most amount of fish. And so you're going to cast it out there. You're going to reel it in, occasionally giving it some jerks. So you kind of got to figure out what the fish want. But uh, a swim jig, in my, in my experience, it's one of the best ways to catch fish in all different types of grasses, whether it's deeper grass, whether it's grass on the surface, whether you're throwing it in and around lily pads and, and, and cattails and uh, pencil reeds. I think a swim jig is one of the best ways to cover water. And so, of course, once you're, once you're you know, covering water with a swim jig, you found an area where some fish are located, then you can slow down with the frog or slow down with the, uh, the soft plastics and that is lure number three now before we get to some fish catches i have two honorable mentions the first of those being uh a and the outcast tackle um stealth fighter or the cage fighter jig so let me grab those this jig real quick here if you are fishing around some deeper grass the best way to catch a big one you know you guys know on the channel i love to talk about big bass uh the best way is to use this jig right here any sort of flipping jig or, or, or grass jig, I love this one here. It's the Outcast Cage Fighter jig, and it just works so well in and around deep grass because you have fish that are feeding on bluegills, feeding on crawfish, and this thing is just a big fish catcher. And so honorable mention number one goes to the jig. Cast it, flip it out there, kind of hop it around the grass. A punch rig, I guess, could also fit in this uh, this model or this, this category as well. And then honorable mention number two is going to be a chatterbait and so i've got one right here this is the strike king thunder cricket the chatterbait is is also a fish catcher but the reason why i chose in terms of moving baits the swim jig over the chatterbait is because the chatterbait is not quite as weedless it's actually not quite weedless at all this one the swim jig has a weed guard this is the outcast tackle um pro style swim jig right here and this is the heavy cover one as you can see it has a weed guard the uh, chatterbait does not have a weed guard. So if you're fishing in and around some grass that is like this, 
where it's may maybe it's maybe it's uh, some real good grass, but it's not super thick, you can afford to throw the chatterbait in and around that grass. But if you're fishing a super choked up, which means an area that the grass has grown up so thick that it just takes over everything, but you still want to cover some water, the swim jig is really the only way to do that without getting caught every single time. So swim jig, chatterbait, interchangeable in some instances, but most of the time a, uh, a swim jig is going to be like I said, for most people, the best search lure. So that is my top three uh, lures when it comes to fishing in and around grass. Hopefully you guys learned something uh, and also my two honorable mentions. I will have all the gear that I talked about linked below in the product description with hopefully some discount codes for y'all. Of course, I do have uh, AFCO discount code, Connect Scale, uh, Outcast Tackle, all those discount codes are linked below for y'all to enjoy. But uh, enjoy a few fish catches here, here in Minnesota of some chunky Minnesota bass. We'll see y'all next time. Okie doke. Gosh! Oh! Yeah. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Oh! Oh, yeah. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. And now stay oh up. Oh! <laughs> Woo! Got him? Yeah. Hey, ho. A little thinker stinker. Smallmouth? Yep. Smallmouth. <laughs> Good grief. Look at that. Go figure smallmouth out of the draw. I know. Who, who would have who would have guessed? Not me.